please uh, join me in welcoming uh, Professor Koike. Thank you, Philip. Uh, it, it is my great pleasure to be invited and um, call Distinguished Lecture Series. Today, the title of my talk is Novel Photonics Polymer for Face to Face Communication. Uh, my English is not a native one, and um, if you look at the uh, photonics polymer, maybe for you, uh, the English is not so good. Photonic polymer or polymer photonics might be your uh, ordinary name, but uh, I would like to photonics polymer. If I say photonic polymer, main field is the body, right? If I say uh, polymer photonics, main field is uh, photonics, polymeric photonics. But my research career for more than 30 years is the year, this is the year polymer, polymer sphere. This is a photonics. And my specialty is just in, in between. So for me, the, the photonics and the polymer are even. Then I, I name in my field the photonics polymer. Okay? Uh, if I ask you a question, this is the polymer sphere. And uh, from the left side, light come. What happened here? I'm just like in my glass. <laughs> you know, but, uh, <laughs> what happened? Depending on the well, clever students that uh, already <laughs> answered. <laughs> anyway, if the refractive index of the sphere is higher than that of the surrounding, light will be refractive. The refractive index of the uh, surrounding is higher than that of the polymer sphere. Then reflection is caused. Yes, that's true. But the answer is only this. If so, uh, I'm sorry, in my exam, if the full point is 100, then the your point is 25 points. <laughs> because because suddenly refraction, you now refraction is caused. But this is only the case when the size of the sphere is the order of millimeter. Suddenly refraction or refraction is caused. But I didn't talk about any size of the sphere. Okay, with the same material, with the same refractive index, the size of the sphere is the micron, what happened? Plane wave is converted to a spherical wave. That is a definition of scattering. In this region, no refraction nor reflection is lost. The reason why the milk is white is coming from scattering. So white is not the color. White is due to the scattering. And that uh, second question, uh, milk is white due to the scattering. Can you make milk transparent? Centrifugation or distilled milk? Then that uh, transparent water can be obtained. But water is not milk. Okay, with the same content, same taste, I can make milk transparent. If the, each size of the particle, this is fatty and the protein, this is you know, divided into a nano size, then light goes through the bottle of milk without scattering. Milk is really completely transparent. I'm not very busy, but uh, if our research is finished, I would like to make milk transparent. And I will have an negotiation to, to, to the uh, headquarters of the Coca-Cola. I don't know if this, they're interested in the uh, transparent milk or not. <laughs> okay. and, and if the size of the um, article is the uh, 
electron side, <coughs> then absorption and emission comes. What I did is just change the size of the heterogeneity from millimeter, <coughs> micron, nanometer. Then we can come up to the really fundamental of the optics system, refraction, scattering, polarization. From these fundamentals, we at Keio University have proposed the uh, one of the first graded index plastic optical fiber, highly scattered optical transmission polymer, HSRT polymer, that has been used as the backlight of the Sony Bio. And uh, from the polarization, we propose the zero barrier fringe polymer. It is very useful <coughs> to improve the color uniformity of the liquid crystal display. Um, these are the proposals from the really fundamental of the optics. So the, these patents became our really fundamentals for us to start the uh, collaboration with the company in the first program uh, starting uh, three years ago. Now I talk about the uh, graded index plastic optical fiber. Uh, this is our graded index plastic optical fiber proposed from Keio University. Um, this is a conventional step index fiber. In the case of the step index plastic optical fiber, core region is surrounded by a planted region with lower flat index. So the light going straight arrives at the end of the fiber earlier, but the light with many reflections as the longer path compared to straight line, so arrive at the end of the fiber later. So uh, this is experimental result of output pulse after 100 meter transmission. Uh, if, although input pulse is very sharp, but after the transmission, 100 meter of fiber output pulse spread like this. This split is corresponding to the 0.1 gigahertz, right? On the other hand, if we form the graded index profile inside the core region, light has a sinusoidal trajectory, just like a mirage. The light going straight at the center has the shortest path, but always go through the center with highest refractive index. So this light has slowest velocity. On the other hand, the light with sinusoidal trajectory has a longer path compared to a straight line, but very often go through the periphery region with lower refractive index. So average velocity is faster than that of light going straight. So these two opposite defects are completely compensated when the refract index profile is optimized. Then we estimated theoretically the optimum index profile and uh, we succeeded in making such a graded index plastic optical fiber. This is an experimental result. Even after the uh, 100 meter data transmission, output pulse is almost exactly the same as that of the input pulse. This output pass corresponds to 40 gigabit per second. So this is this is a one 4.1 gigabit per second. So uh, 400 times data transmission uh, became possible. Now you can see the uh, beautiful uh, ray trajectories. Suddenly, uh, this is the uh, showing the radiant in the profile that exists inside the quark region. Probably for you, you think this is the beautiful, right? So inside the lens. But for me, it's really terrible. Because you can see the laser beam clearly because light is scattered to your eye due to the big loss of scattering. So this is a history 
of the uh, attenuation <coughs> of the POF. Step index plastic optical fiber uh, reported from Dupont for the first time in the 1960s. But at that time, that the loss is 1,000 dB per kilometer. That corresponds to the, uh, the transmission distance of on the several meter. Okay. Then that uh, Dupont stopped the research and the, uh, the technology developed for POF is sold to uh, Mitsubishi Radio. After that, mainly by Japanese company and institute, they tried to do the purification, and the loss is decreased and decreased by the purification. At that time, in 1982, I received the PhD from KU University uh, on the title of First Graded Index Plastic Optical Fiber. But uh, attenuation went back to uh, 1,000 dB per kilometer. At that time, mainstream of optical fiber development in the 1980s is how to make a transparent optical fiber. So that uh, in order to do that, the, the, the effort is how to eliminate impurities. But our proposal of grading the plastic optical fiber is Refract in the profile of the POF core region. So that means it is necessary to distribute dopants into the polymer materials. Dopants should have higher refractive index rather than the refractive index of polymer matrix. And we have the concentration distribution in the radial direction. So we obtain a graded index profile. But the question, they don't directly ask me, but the, the people suppose that it correspond to adding impurities. Then data went back to 1,000 dB per kilometer. Actually, uh, we are doing it the opposite way in order to form the index profile, adding something that corresponds to the dopants. That's the question. Of course, I said no. But in academia, although the idea is OK, but theory is far from the reality. I don't say now. No, we can do this. But uh, we continue to make the fiber. At that time, I was still single. And I very often you know, to make the fiber overnight. And that uh, next morning, but the uh, fiber loss is always more than 1,000 dB per kilometer. And so uh, finally, I was obliged of the research on the POF from 1982. After 1982, when I received the PhD, my uh, research or career was very smooth. But uh, right after I received the PhD, I met the first slam. Uh, there's no reason. I don't know what is the way to break through. Then I'm um, reading the books and the papers. I met the Einstein's thermal, thermally induced Planck equation theory in 1910. That is an equation. This is a very unique equation to correlate the um, scattering loss Scattering loss, VV isotropy. This is vertically <coughs> polarized light pump and the vertically scattered. Then the, this is the definition of the VV scattering. This is isotropic VV scattering. It's proportional to the beta, that is the uh, isothermal complexity. So I measured 
hypothermal compressibility of the polymer materials used for POF. Then estimated the uh, VV scattering loss. Wow, it's less than 10 dB per kilometer. Although the experimental result is 1,000 dB per kilometer, this is really, for me, the light for the future in, in, in the research. But the question, again, that what is the difference between theory and the experiment 990? Uh, um, the, the, it was supposed that the Einstein theory could not be applicable to solidified polymer material. And uh, I learned lots about what is the origin of the scattering from the polymer materials. There are so many uh, speculations on excess scattering. For example, the, there is some paper, sterile regularity, according to the configuration of specific text. This is related to our uh, actistis. For example, if the MMA monomer is polymerized by radical polymerization without impurities, but three, three structures are simultaneously obtained. 65% is, is the uh, syndiotactic polymer. 30% is the heterotactic polymer, and 5% is iso uh, isotactic polymer. These three polymers are pure PMMA, but uh, the steric structure is different, like a DL. And uh, the refract indices of three polymers are different from each other. So if this is a reason, this is the inherent reason of 1,000 dB per kilometer, or very large molecular weight uh, polymer aggregate, or uh, formation of a cross linkage or molecular side chains as a result of gel effect. That is the reason causing the scatterings. But for me, reading these papers, these are the just hypothetical uh, speculations, not based on the molecule itself, I suppose. Then, uh, I met the second important person. That is the paper uh, by Debye. Debye introduced for the first time the correlation function in order to express the tiny heterogeneous structure. So this is the famous Debye theory for light scattering. Uh, Debye received the, the, the Nobel Prize of Physics uh, because of this excellent work. Now, this is the uh, transparent polymer, but uh, slightly refract index is fractal. That has been overlooked so far because the poly fiber looks transparent. But injecting the laser, you can certainly see the trajectories so that uh, some heterogeneous structure exists. And the shape is really ambiguous. But uh, correlation length A is a measure of the size of the heterogeneous roughly and also the measure of the shape also. And uh, this is a correlation function. And this correlation function is inserted to this. And this integration can be analytically solved. This is the solution. This equation became for me uh, the, the, the powerful tool to analyze the reason of scattering. Now, scattering loss is a function of the correlation length, roughly the size of the heterogeneities, and it's a function of the uh, refractive index differences. The order. What happens?
almost recover. Go. Then that uh, when using this equation, I can correlate the scattering loss with the uh, size of the heterogeneities and the refractive differences. The order of the fluctuation of the refractive index is uh, the order of 10 to the minus fifth or sixth power. It's almost overlooked, but that is causing the scattering loss. Now, by the by the equation, I come to the conclusion that I have stopped the research. So far, I try to make the uh, index profile by changing the co-polymer compositions. In the case of the co-polymer, the minimum size of the heterogeneity <coughs> is one polymer points. Polymer is a very long molecules, and usually one molecule is just like a point. And the size of this is uh, a few hundred armstrong at least. If this size correlation length is inserted to the equation of the by scattering theory, it easily come to the several hundred decibel per kilometer. So, if I continue the co-polymerization process, this is inherent scattering loss coming from the minimum size of the polymer coil. That is still hundred armstrongs. Then I stop the co-polymerization process. And I introduced adding small dopant. Small dopant has the uh, size of several armstrongs. So if the, uh, the small dopant are not aggregated, the minimum size is uh, very small compared to a concordia. Then this several armstrong is inserted to the equation. Okay, now. This is the schematic representation of this equation. Okay, VB scattering loss is the coordinate. And uh, abscissa is the uh, correlation length. It's uh, corresponding to the size of the heterogeneities. <coughs> In the case of the co-polymer, might be a 200 my, uh, Armstrong or more. Then that's, uh, that's almost the uh, 1,000 dB per But uh, Adding the small dopants, size of the small dopants is here around here. So we can almost completely eliminate excess scattering loss by adding a small dopant. And the small dopant has the concentration distribution in the radial direction. That is the idea. But people say that copolymerization is much better than adding dopant because adding dopant Due to the plant size effect, then that uh, glass transition <coughs> temperature and thermal stability goes down. Actually, after that, now spending 20 years, now graded index plastic optical fiber has been commercially available from, for example, Asahi Glass Corporation, that is one of the biggest chemical companies in Japan. Now this fiber is the, uh, stable in some region from minus 25 degrees centigrade to 80 or 90 degrees centigrade. <coughs> this is the clear standardization. But if the temperature is more than the glass transition temperature of this polymer material, around 180 degrees centigrade, then the uh, small dopants start to degrade to change the profile. But that's okay. Uh, 
have such a temperature, I found first problem. Right? So that uh, we suddenly clear the, uh, the uh, standardization. <coughs> so this was in 1990. I could go out the dark period, the first one, but taking that uh, more than eight years. Actually, uh, I, I just draw the straight line here. There is no experimental result here, which means that no result uh, from a laboratory on the year uh, five. So I have to write in write it like this. After that, my laboratory has become very active. I decided I go to the, uh, the dopant system. Then uh, to the students, OK, you can do the, uh, the dopant A. You use dopant B, dopant C and uh, the, uh, the thermal stability by using the dopant A, B, something. But uh, for me, the most important to be improved myself, it might be that period rather than this. From here, I filed the patents, and then we wrote we run a lot of papers. But uh, in 1990 is the year, just the exit. Then, First, the, uh, the radiant index profile was obtained in a preform <coughs> state. And this preform rod is heat drawn into the fiber. But considering the uh, process cost, especially compared to the silicopter fiber, silicopter fiber is very thin. But the advantage of the plastic fiber is large core, then easy connection can be made. So that considering the, uh, the drawing ratio, uh, plastic fiber has disadvantage. So uh, from 2005, I, uh, we shifted to an extrusion process. Extrusion process is that core polymer and the clamp polymer are simultaneously were extruded to get the fiber. Like a synthesis fiber, you know, the fiber is made. So um, it's uh, very effective. So this is the first draw tower. Uh, Opera for quantum plant located here, and the diffusion zone located here, and the fiber. So a mechanism like this. Uh, core polymer and ground polymer are simultaneously extruded in this line. The core, core polymer includes small dopants having higher refractive index, homogeneous dopant. Then the, the right after the dye, here the index profile is of just like stepiness. But uh, during the diffusion tube, the uh, dopant start to migrate to the periphery region to form the graded index profile. So that the process is very simple. Now this is your experimental result of refract index profile of the exist, uh, resulting fiber. When the temperature is 240 degrees centigrade, the index exponent of the index profile is 3.3, changing the uh, temperature of the diffusion zone then we can uh, control the index profile very precisely. This is your development history mm -hmm. of data rate achieved by POFX. So that uh, uh, after we uh, decided to, to use the dopant system, that the every year's annual record is renewed by our grade index plastic fiber. Now that the coordinate is the bitrate distance product. So uh, bitrate is higher or the distance is longer, then uh, this is the performance of the uh, fiber transmission. Then that, uh, we started the co extrusion process. Now, in 2009, we obtained 40 gigabit per second. That is higher than even single fiber. And uh, I suppose 
the preform method is much easier to control the index profile because in the case of the co-extrusion process, what we can do is just do the extrusion. Then the diffusion of the dopant is based on the natural X law. We cannot do any external you know, control. But fortunately, index profile by the co-extrusion process is exactly the same as the optimal index profile to minimize the mode of dispersion and optical fiber communication. I don't know if there is such a relationship, but uh, only God knows that the relation, that uh, some diffusion by a fixed law is exactly the same as the optical, optimal index profile minimizing the uh, mode of dispersion. Anyway, the, the material I use is the perfluorinated polymer. In the case of the PMMA, that is a green corruption, uh, you suppose the PMMA is a transparent material in the visible region. That's true. But not in the infrared region. Because uh, PMMA has hydrogen. There is a carbon hydrogen bonding. So hydrogen is the lightest atom. So that uh, frequency, the stretching vibration is very fast. So original vibration occur at the 3.4 micro. And this peak is corresponding to the overtone of carbon hydrogen stretching vibration. And the fourth and the fifth and the sixth. So, uh, what we did is that lightest hydrogen is substituted for much heavier atom, that is fluorine. So uh, the, this is a perfluorinated polymer. Then that uh, original uh, the stretching vibration occur much, much far from the, this area, maybe a 10 meter right side or something. So virtually uh, in this important area for the laser of, uh, absorption of almost zero. So this is the perfluorine uh, polymer uh, material developed by Asa Inverse Corporation that has been collaborating with us. And also, second advantage of the perfluorine polymer is that Material dispersion is smaller than even silica material dispersion. The reason why the silica has the uh, 1.3 microns depth and 3.5 microns material dispersion of the silica becomes zero. And the crossing zero line and it becomes fast. But important wavelength for plastic fibers around here. This volume is smaller than C. Material dispersion as a unit of nanosecond per nanometer kilometer. A little complicated. This nanometer means the difference of the uh, wavelength. If we say a laser, 4.85 micron, there is no such a monochromatic laser. Laser has some spectrum width. Okay, so if the, there is one nanometer spectrum with a difference, and uh, so changing the uh, one nanometer of wavelength, then if material dispersion is large, then refract index changes. So in the lower refract index, velocity of the light is faster. So even if the index profile is optical, optimally controlled, but due to the difference of the, the wavelength of the light, uh, through one kilometer fiber, that uh, this nano second is a difference of the arriving time after one kilometer. So this is a definition of material dispersion. So uh, zero material dispersion is the ideal material. That material has no uh, wavelength dependence of refractive. If the refractive index independent of the wave, then material dispersion. So, so this uh, 
figure shows the inherent characteristics of the material we sell. We will be using this experimental result. Uh, we estimated the theoretical bitrate of perfluorinated gray index plastic of the fiber. That is much, much higher than that of the silica management fiber. Silica management fiber can cover the 10 gigabit per second. But if the wavelength of the laser is 0.6 or 1.5, then that uh, bitrate is seriously deteriorated. But in the case of the uh, PMMA, uh, I'm sorry, perfluorine polymer based GIPOF, bitrate from the visible to 1.5 microns almost the order of the 40 gigabit per second. That is due to the material dispersion. So this is inherent error. So uh, usually people suppose that uh, plastic is OK, but uh, silica is much better. And that's the prejudice that the plastic quality is also, but much cheaper. Then shall we use plastic instead of the silica fiber? But I don't like this, because I'm proud of the polymer, because I began with the polymer science. So uh, I would say, uh, as for the uh, bitrate of the data transmission, Plastic is much, much better than silica fiber. Now we can do this. Well, so that the, we are now proposing capillary of light. As we know, two years ago, we met the Hollywood disaster, Fukushima earthquake, uh, March 11. You know that uh, in the Tokyo and the Yokohama area, 500 kilometers far from the epicenter of earthquake. So some of the uh, earthquake is serious, but not damages so much. But even in Tokyo and Yokohama, for one day, you could not get any communications. Uh, when earthquake came, okay, I was in Hokkaido to attend the conference. The Hokkaido is far from the hip center, but it, uh, the movement is serious. And uh, I knew that my daughter, uh, right after the exam, uh, she wants to go to the uh, Disneyland with uh, her friends. And uh, I knew that she was in Disneyland. I was so scared watching the uh, TV. Uh, some, uh, some news, uh, uh, some, some uh, parking lots will destroy uh, Disneyland area. Well, fortunately, uh, my daughter uh, was in the house, so that's okay. But anyway, I tried to contact with my daughter, but I could not you know, communicate with her. But so far, including myself, uh, we are proud of the high technology of IT, especially for the optical fiber communication. We suppose we are, we are doing the leading edge of uh, the technologies, but uh, I really feel the weakness of the technology based on optical fiber communication. So what I would like to propose is to have the uh, capillary of the light. Optical fiber is distributed in any house, any building, any campus, any library. So if we have the same size earthquake, shall we go to go back home or go to the library? Then you can use iPhone or everything. The Wi-Fi signal is directly converted to the optical signal. So the capacity of the uh, wireless or optical fiber, including optical fiber uh, communication, we can cover everything. So in such a, an earthquake, if we have the optical fiber communication network, like a capillary of the light, we can communicate. So uh, this is, but the uh, problem is that if silica optical fiber is used, as the uh, cable in between the OMU and the TV. Actually, this is a demonstration 
with using the glass optical fiber. Then that uh, magnetic noise is really serious. People say this is the uh, model noise. Then that uh, in Japan that uh, study of radio over fiber was stopped almost 20 years ago. But it's just like a magic. Now this glass silica is replaced by our normal graded index plastic of fiber. That's it, keeping these same conditions. Then that uh, we watch TV. No noise is observed. It's just like a dancing. I just changed the fiber, replaced the fiber. The significant reduction of the transmission noise is observed. Uh, it's not perfectly analyzed, but uh, so far, especially in the Bell Labs and uh, leading the uh, study on the optical fiber communications. They developed a couple of power equation that is a very famous one. But uh, they neglect the tiny fluctuation in the glass material. But in plastic fiber, suddenly some heterogeneous structure, as I explained. So this is a tiny one and has been overlooked. But uh, utilizing the Debye equation, uh, we know the correlation between the scattering and the microstructures. So uh, joining uh, the uh, two different equations to have this. This is the one we would like to propose. Now, Hij is a coupling coefficient between I volt and J volt. Now, this is the function of the size of heterogeneities and uh, fluctuation of the different indices. So uh, this is, anyway, that one dominant reason to dramatically decrease the noise. So sometimes the scattering loss is bad to minimize the size. But sometimes, uh, inside the house, we don't need the long distance. So such a fiber, exposed one, is not very useful because tiny heterogeneous structure almost completely eliminate the other ones. Now I move on to the scattering. So far, if I say scattering, you suppose, oh, it's a negative phenomenon. But if I say scattering efficiency, then that is more positive. So uh, application is to the backlight of the sunny vibe. Adding the uh, dope, uh, sphere, the light is homogeneously scattered. So we're using the HSO polymer. The backlight system became much simpler compared to our conventional ones. And this is a comparison of the luminance. In the case of the conventional transparent backlight, the luminance is 3,000 candela. But uh, we're using the HSO polymer utilizing the scattering. Scattering is has the intensity of the 5,700. It's almost a double of the uh, intensity of the conventional backlight. So that uh, our HSLT polymer has been used in the Sony Vario, Panasonic, that's not, Kawashiro Dynamo, Samsung, and uh, mobile um, devices. Now I move on to the uh, fringes. As you know, the, uh, the polymer is randomly oriented. Then that the biofringence delta n is zero. But uh, if the polymer is oriented like this, then biofringence is caused. That this is a, the definition of the orientational biofringence. That is the uh, difference of the refract index in that direction or perpendicular direction. So this is the uh, definition of the orientational biofringence. So uh, some polymer has a positive biofringence. Some polymer like uh, polystyrene then has a negative biofringence. So in order to compensate the biofringence, we for the first time propose the random copolymerization method for uh, an anisotropic molecular dopamine method. 
where even if the polymer is oriented, but uh, uh, we do the, uh, the, the polymerization uh, with two monomers. One has the positive value printed, the other is negative value printed, and randomly co polymerized. So that uh, anisotropic uh, polarization is compensated in the size of the monomer unit. So even if the, the polymer is completely stretched, but uh, by effringence is cancelled in that area, adding the dopant, that has the, uh, the opposite side side uh, side by effringence, then the, the polymer is oriented, the, the dopant is also oriented to cancel the by effringence. So uh, the dopant system and the co-polymerization system, we obtain the uh, subtly zero by effringence polymer. Then that uh, I wrote the papers, zero by effringence polymer. Then we are succeeded in, but with using this polymer film, large screen display, but the quality is not so good. This is a zero by effringence polymer. Only orientational by effringence is there. If we add the stress, serious by effringence of course. Release the stress, go back to transparent. So this by effringence caused by a uh, photoelastic by effringence. So in order to completely make material zero by effringence, there are two mechanisms. One is the orientation of polymer chain, and the other is a photoelastic by effringence. So we have to cancel both zero. But for example, if MMA is called polymerite with 3FMA, MMA has the uh, negative orientation by effringence, and the positive here, this has a positive by effringence. So negative pole is supposed to mix, then we can find some uh, the composition showing the zero by effringence. But unfortunately, as for the photoelastic by effringence, negative and negative. If the negative and the negative are mixed, the result is a negative. So, uh, we decided to add another model. So uh, with this, we finally obtain the zero zero by effringence point for the uh, orientation of polymer chain zero. PMMA has minus orientation by effringence. To this film, we add a stress. Again, it's zero. So we name. Zero, zero by your print transport. The one of the application of the zero by your print transport is the uh, backlight of the LCD. If you use the laser here, but uh, usually the uh, backlight has slight amount of by your print So after the one centimeter, the light becomes random. And so uh, this is a structure of the liquid crystal display. So the light is absorbed at the first polarizer. Because after the polarizer, the linearly polarized light is come. So other light is completely absorbed. So uh, the electricity, 50% of the light is absorbed. But if we use zero by fringes particle, there is no reason to tabulate the a linear polarization. So from the backlight, it completely linearly polarized light comes. So if the direction of the polarized is in parallel to the direction of the polarization of light from the backlight, then there is no light absorbed. So 100% of the light is transmitted. Okay, this is a demonstration. Now we made the zero zero by a few just from the backlight. Here we go. This is the first polarized polymer backlight. Okay, now we rotate the, uh, the polarizer. Now it's completely dark because this is the backlight. But the light from backlight is almost 100% linearly polarized. Then when the uh, angle becomes perpendicular, it's completely dark. So this is the first demonstration of the uh, completely linearly polarized backlight. With using this, the brightness becomes 200 times. 
So the problem of the liquid crystal display is the uh, power consumption. So for 50% it is uh, exposed, absorbed. But now with using this, uh, <coughs> Two hundred percent brightness is achieved. This, this is the conventional system, the liquid crystal display. So, as you know, that the light comes like this. So, problem is that changing the viewing angle. If we see the blue here, but the changing the viewing angle, it becomes red due to the biofringence of the liquid crystal cell. So, in order to compensate this biofringence, then that the uh, retardation films are used here. But uh, this retardation film is not ideal to completely compensate the, the biofringence, the LC cell. So some uh, degradation of color uniformity is caused. Then the, if the light is collimated from the backlight, <coughs> there's no tilt angle light. So that uh, we can eliminate expensive retardation film. That is a proposal from our side, our material proposal. So material changes the system. Such a structure is made by your thermoelectric polymer and HSOT backlight and HSOT diffusers. As for the collimated light uh, from the HSOT, very collimated light is compared to uh, uh, conventional ones. And as for the uh, zero biofringence films, now that uh, these are the, the leakage of the uh, light uh, due to the uh, biofringence of the uh, polymer films. So if the polymer films extruded, usually your uh, biofringence is very serious. But with using the zero, zero biofringence polymer, even by extrusion process, uh, the biofringence is really zero. As for the uh, uh, diffuse, usually problem we have to consider as the uh, color uniform by changing the viewing angle. Because at the, at the center, it's uh, red. Because sunset is always red. Because the uh, the blue, that is a shorter wavelength of light, is dominantly scattered out. So the transmitting light is shifted to a longer wavelength. So this is a beautiful, <coughs> beautiful red sunset in Yokohama. The lanterns, beautiful, right? And, uh, so if this is the uh, science, I have to give up improvement process. But this is the common sense, only on all. This is the uh, picture of blue sunset, not red. This is a picture sent from NASA. This is a sunset on Mars. So that the gravity is not much smaller compared to on Earth. What happens? Then that we go back to fundamentals again. This is the mean scattering theory. I love mean scattering because Mean scattering theory assumes the scatter is completely sphere. But that's it. There's no other assumptions. This is a really perfect equation. If we assume the 100 uh, centimeter sphere, we can uh, come to the similar equation also with mean scattering. In the case of the uh, Debye equation, that was very useful for me to develop the uh, HSOT for the backlight from plastic optical fiber. But the by equation is no more useful in this because with increasing the size of the uh, particle diameter, in the Debye equation, blue is coming like this, red is coming like this, never crossed. But with this precise calculation of the mean scattering, then around six microns, before that, Blue light is dominantly scattered rather than red. That is common sense for us, right? And uh, this is the uh, fluorescent lamp here. So this is corresponding to the uh, red sunset 
It's not the red, but the yellow. And the downside is here, the raw side is the scatter. So blue sky it can be made, adding the two microns. But adding eight microns, what happened? It's, you know, that's a reverse. So red is scattered. So transmitting light should be shifting to uh, blue, blue something. Certainly adding eight microns, we obtain blue. And the scattering is yellow. So today is a fine day. If we go out and if we uh, disperse the uh, eight micron particles together, like dispersed, then the simultaneously a blue sky becomes red sky. That is the theory of the miscatter. Then at the, we find this uh, result uh, as a patent. And the patent uh, was issued. Now that uh, we obtain completely uh, uniform uh, view. Now, this is our proposed LCD without using retardation films. And uh, we measure the uh, color shift. That is the uh, most important characteristics. So that uh, people say now that uh, uh, we are shifting to uh, organic EL rather than LCD, because LCD technology has been mature, but uh, big problem, color shift is not improved. Then that uh, they are competing the price or down. Then that uh, high quality is shifting to 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 more uh, organic yield. But I would say stopping uh, with using our proposal from the material side. We measure the uh, color shift. This is a result. Okay, this is the, the 24 colors of Macbeth chart. And if the, there is no color shift, this is the sample. Our propose is the, the blue one. The TN is the uh, uh, PC monitor. The VA is the LED, LCD TV from S company. This company is very convenient. We have two this company in Japan and the one this company from the next country. And anyway, this is the, the new, new model of the uh, LCD TV of this company. And um, especially 8 and 13, this is the blue is, 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 not, it, it is not good, but that the, the proposed one has the uh, almost, almost perfect. Now changing the viewing angle, and the, this is a LCD TV, commercial available, TV monitor. But actually, uh, this is a, uh, my PC monitor. Now you can see this is blue, but if we look at here, it's really yellow. So uh, including the, the detonation of the film, but uh, this, it, 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 it's <coughs> just like this. And also, our proposed one is better than even organic LED. So far, I explained the uh, zero biofringes part. If biofringes exist, even if it's a very tiny one, uh, the dark becomes white. That is the reason of causing the heat of the light. And uh, the biofringes are even larger than the color is caused. Then I propose zero biofringes polymer. But that's the really new new danger we got very recent. Increasing the biofringes to extraordinarily large biofringes area, what happens? Usually uh, increasing the uh, this is the retardation, the 1,000 nanometer. Then that, uh, the color is caused like this. But uh, if the retardation 5,000, come like this. So that, uh, this is a calculated result that the comparison between observed one and the simulation. If the biofringes completely zero, it's dark. But increasing the biofringes, 
then become white and the blue and like this. And uh, the, this is the uh, observed color. Suddenly, by the biofringence, the, the changing the angle, the color becomes different. But when the, uh, the retardation becomes more than 10,000, this spectrum becomes completely the same as that of the LED spectrum. So uh, if you watch the uh, iPad through the sunglass in some angle, you cannot see this. Because the light from the iPad or any LCD is linearly polarized. It's not natural. <coughs> but adding this film, it becomes completely random. So now, uh, this is a demonstration. This is iPad. Okay. We put the, uh, the polarizer rotating. It's completely dark. Okay. This is this kind of sunglass. Okay. Now we insert the uh, extraordinarily large biofrigence film. And insert the fluorizer again and you rotate. Without any color degradation, it's uh, really beautiful. Well, so uh, uh, from uh, the three years ago, I focused on the zero biofringence partner using the uh, huge amount of the uh, fund. But with this, we want to opposite way to increase the biofringence. That is a solution. So, with using this film, I suppose that, that this film will change the concept of the display itself. And this film is applicable to even organic LED. And uh, that was the, uh, actually the news you know, and the, the, the front page of the Nikkei newspaper, that is just like the Wall Street and New York Times. And it, it's uh, the last month, February 4th. Uh, that was the uh, scoop article. Uh, and this material is made of pet bottle. So that looking at pet, it's a very clear, very tough, that's expensive. Why don't we use this? But the problem is the large value of this. But now this is the uh, good candidate to obtain extraordinary large value printed films by pet bottle. All right. Oh, this is the picture of the HSOP screen. And this is 150 inches. And on the 4K, that's a high vision. And it's 3D. That's the first demonstration. I'm standing at the stage of the player hall in the Hiyoshi campus in Yokohama. Uh, he is a, a Mr. Mori a very fi famous astronaut and also a president of the uh, Science Museum in, in the Odaiba, facing to a Tokyo Bay. So actual distance here is 35 kilometers apart from each other. And we can shake hands like this. <laughs> so this is a, a really face-to-face -face communication. And our radio microscope fiber has been installed in the hospital like this. For example, uh, this is the uh, Akakibara Hall uh, Heart Disease Hospital with 320 beds. Uh, 400, 460 counter fiber, plastic counter fiber is used in here. So that uh, this is a heart disease hospital. So emergency is uh, that really uh, you know, that, uh, important. And any data of the MRI or image is uh, transmitted to our ready units plastic of the fiber. So now that this is the, the display, and this display is just uh, the window connected to, to hospital or education, whatever. I think you know that uh, I really would like to uh, put this uh, screen uh, in my uh, mother's hometown then that the we can do a face-to-face -face communication. Uh, but uh, uh, my mother, um, 
pass away briskly. So I, I cannot do this. But, you know, I would say to, to her, shall we have the dinner together tomorrow? Then, we can have the dinner together with a feeling like this. It's a virtual, but uh, it's really realistic. So I think the most important thing in life is not visible, but that is a reason for being alive. So uh, this is uh, my goal. That is a proposal from the material side. Real time, real size, real feeling. And such that the photonics polymer will bring us back to face-to-face uh, -face human interaction. That is my goal. So this is the, the last slide. Polymers were seen as unsuitable for the high performance photonics field. But more than 20 years has passed since then. And the photonics polymers such as the world's fastest plastic of fiber and the high definition displays have now been created. The fundamental theories developed by Einstein and Debye on light scattering in early to mid 1900s has become my Bible. I learned that the more you want to make a breakthrough in the leading edge, the more important it is to go back to the mathematics. That's all. I'm sorry that my uh, presentation is over because of scattering of my talk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. For Thank you for a truly inspiring talk. We have time for questions. Continuing the experiment, but uh, the fiber uh, we can transmit the signal only six meter. Much e easier to say hello, <laughs> right? Uh, um, so I continue. But uh, important thing is to know some black box. In order to dig the black box, that's hard for us to continue to make efforts. But if there is some black box, if we try to go around to write the papers. Uh, the number of the papers that uh, uh, you know, needed for, for especially young scientists and uh, students, you have to write papers, right? But uh, that's easy. But the important thing is if, we, if there is some black box, we have to analyze what is the origin of something. So uh, I learned that the, the scattering theory. And uh, uh, now that I have the file like this, that is scattering. Uh, so uh, I read books and the papers. And uh, so that, uh, the, but uh, we have to, we have to, to, to come that, uh, understand what is the assumption of the theory. Uh, some theories have their, uh, the, almost all theories are really excellent, but uh, many of them start from the uh, very simple assumption that is far from the reality. From that assumption, result is OK. But assumption is different from reality. That's a problem. So we have to carefully consider this assumption of theory is right or not. If assumption is really near to the real situation, we can accept that theory. Well, um, 
this is the, uh, the news of the last month that uh, we have been collaborating with the Toyo, uh, Toyobo, that is one of the biggest uh, chemical companies in Japan. They started the, they started the production. And uh, this is an announcement. So uh, now that the uh, film is available uh, to any display. For example, if you uh, put this film just in front of the iPad, then you can take with the tape. So uh, I hope that uh, in, in the future our film will uh, dramatically increase the uh, color uniform. Then big crystal display can be used in hospital. Changing changing the viewing angle if the color is not changing. So this is very useful to detect the early stage of the cancer cell or something. Slight amount of color change is big very real and also using this is, is better than even real one because it, it can be magnified. So, that's that. The cost? It's a bubble. Any other questions? Uh, there's one in the back here. Are your, uh, are your slides with um, all of the beginning slides when you're talking about the uh, zero the uh, polymer films of zero bioprinted films. Yes. You have um, you have like a look like a schematic where you have like you, know, you mix some of the positive monomers and some of the negative monomers and I think you have maybe like some type of a number on there, maybe like a ratio of like yes. the, the blends and everything like that. You have a little figure. But um so if you just mix if you get it if you just mix them together and then you run the uh, reaction and then it just and that's your polymer, or is there any type of like uh, like regio specificity or anything like that? Like, do they need to be regio regular to get that thing to get those properties specifically, or is it just like however the monomers kind of fit together and you end up with it? Well, um, okay, that's a good question. But uh, basically, if we find the uh, some ratio to make zero value fringes, then this for this polymer by any orientation of polymer chains, by your fringes, always cancel, always conflict. Um, if your question is, is about the, uh, the by your fringes dispersity, dispersity is the, uh, um, by your fringes is a function of the wavelength sometimes. But in this is by your fringes polymer. At, uh, at sub specified wavelength by infringes to zero by changing the wavelength by infringes to zero. So, um, okay. Okay, well, um, actually, uh, as usual, after the, the talk, there is a reception in honor of uh, the speaker, and uh, the reception will take place on in the, um, the second floor of the Molecular Science and Engineering Building. So you're all invited there. And uh, for those of you who still have questions, I'm sure that Professor Koike uh, will be happy to uh, interact with you and uh, answer some of these other questions. Before we, we thank him again, we have uh, a little tradition here. And we, we also make uh, displays, but they are really old fashioned and much less <laughs> interactive. <laughs> Uh, the displays that uh, you are producing, but hopefully, oh. if you put that uh, somewhere on the wall in your office, it will uh, um, remind you of your visit here, and so it won't be a face-to-face -face interaction. <laughs> <laughs> Good memory. So thank you very much again. Let's, uh